Hello everyone, I'm Michaela Kathleen and in this video I'm doing my second ever bookshelf tour. I did a bookshelf tour like maybe like my fifth or so video on YouTube and it had so many def technical difficulties and was just the longest shoot I've ever actually done even though it's not the longest video on my channel that I decided that I'm not gonna do bookshelf tours very often only if there's a major change which as seen recently, I did get a new bookshelf. And then also in general, I have unhauled and hauled a lot in the last three years. So with the new bookshelf, I figured I would finally do another full bookshelf tour. And oh my gosh, I went and rewatched, I skimmed <laughs> the first one I did. So painful to watch, so cringy. My voice in my early videos was so unnatural. It's just really hard to listen to myself. Not that none of my more recent videos don't feature any cringe at all, but I do feel like I talk a lot more natural than I used to. But anyways, the bookshelf tour. I'm not gonna do like as full of a tour as I did in that first video, just because a lot of the shelves are quite similar to what they were. If you want to watch the cringy version, you can see more details on the shelves that haven't changed much, but I am gonna mostly focus on the things that have actually changed. So starting with the John Green shelf, which is still here. It is still quite similar to how it was, but I do have some new books. I have, of course, The Anthropocene Reviewed, which I got quite recently. And also Hank's A Beautifully Foolish Endeavor was not out yet when I did that first tour, which is kind of crazy to me. And then also at the like very back of the shelf, hidden away, is Sarah Erst Green's book, You Are an Artist, which my husband and I started doing this book together when I got it. And yeah, we just never made it very far. <laughs> we really dropped off on working on it. And I think at some point we need to get back to it and not be afraid to like skip the ones that we just aren't feeling. <laughs> but yes, the John Green shelf has been here from the beginning and it remains mostly unchanged. It really only changes when a Green family member publishes a new book. And then moving down to the Scott Westerfeld shelf once again. Since this is a shelf dedicated to one author, and this time not even a family of authors, it does not change very often. The only two new ones are Mirror's Edge and Youngbloods, which are the completion of the Uglies spinoff series. I'm pretty sure I had the first two when I first started my channel, but maybe only the first one. But yes, Scott Westerfeld is one of my favorite authors, mostly because he wrote the Ugly series, which is my all-time favorite dystopian series. And I was very excited back in the day when the spinoff series started. The first one completely holds up, the rest of them not so much. <laughs> but yeah, under Uglies and its spinoff series we have Afterworlds, which is another fantastic book. And at the back of the Scott Westerfeld shelf is the Zeros trilogy, which he wrote with two other authors. And they're just okay, so that's the Scott Westerfeld shelf. Moving on, after that we have a shelf that has probably changed a fair amount, and that is my YA, kind of more romantic YA shelf. I've still got the same decor on this shelf, and I've still got my Rainbow Rowell stack, which is for right now unchanged. I do have some more Rainbow Rowell over on my TBR shelves, which I will not be showing because it's just a completely different set of shelves. These are books that I own and am as of right now for sure keeping, whereas TBR, who knows what's gonna happen with any of those. And I do actually have to note that I do have other books not on these shelves that I probably didn't have way back when. I just can't fit all of my books on my shelves anymore, even with this new one. So like all my Leigh Bardugo books are out in the living room. Also, my husband has his own shelves nowadays that I read books off of <laughs> that he did not have when he first moved in. So yeah, like that other video, this is just a tour of my main shelves. <laughs> but back to the romancy YA. Next to the Rainbow Rowell stack here, we do have some changes. I used to have my two Jennifer Niven books sitting there because Jennifer Niv Niven is another YA author that I really like, but she got moved over to the new shelf and I put Eliza and Her Monsters next to Rainbow because it does have such fangirl vibes to it and they even match. <laughs> and then I also stuck Windfall there, which I do not really care much about, but they do look nice together. So that's how that happened. And then in the back here, we have the Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants, which is unchanged. That was always there. 
it is a childhood favorite. But then I do now have the entirety of the Anna and the French Kiss series, which Anna and the French Kiss is the first book that I read after starting my booktube channel. So fun to have the whole series now. The covers of these books are all so beautiful and it's actually a really enjoyable YA romance series. So it was a great place to start my booktube channel and I'm excited to own them all now and have them all on my shelves. And then next to those we have Love Blind by C. Desir and Joanne Perry, Words in Deep Blue by Kath Crowley, which I actually reread at some point during having my channel with the intention of maybe I was going to unhaul it because I didn't love it the first time around, but then I actually liked it better the second time around, so I kept it. And then Moxie by Jennifer Matthew, which I read maybe last year, maybe this year. It is a semi-new addition to the shelves. And then finally, Miss You by Kate Eberlin, which I think has been on my shelves all along. So yeah, the main changes for the shelf since starting my channel is that it got very full. At one point I had three books stacked on top of the books at the back. And that is part of the reason that I got the new shelf was so that I could start to flow some of my YA books onto the new shelf. So it has filled up and unfilled since then. And the same goes for this YA shelf down here which I think you can kind of just see the tops of the books on this one. But yeah, this one is now just a flat row of books at the front of the shelf, whereas it used to be that row pushed to the back with three stacked on top and three stacked in front down here, much like this shelf. So yeah, once again, the YA shelves were just overflowing. But yeah, I'll do a quick rundown of each book on this shelf, because again, this is one of the shelves that has probably changed a bit since the beginning. So we've got Kids of Appetite by David Arnold, which I did already own. This is one of my favorite YA books. The Spectacular Now by Tim Tharp. Wonder by RJ Palacio. City of Saints and Thieves by Natalie C. Anderson. Why We Broke Up by Daniel Handler, aka Lemony Snicket. Me and Earl and the Dying Girl by Jesse Andrews. We All Looked Up by Tommy Wallach. A Monster Calls by Nat Patrick Ness. It's Kind of a Funny Story by Ned Vizzini. I Love You Beth Cooper by Larry Doyle. Violent Ends by multiple authors. <laughs> the Outsiders by S.E. Hinton. And finally, The Perks of Being a Wallflower by Stephen Schwatsky. So yeah, I don't really know which of these books are new or if any of them are since starting my channel. I'm sure that I've unhauled some books that were on this shelf. I kind of can't wait to put some more books on this shelf again because I like the aesthetic better of having like some things in the back and some things in the front and now it's just like a straight stack. <laughs> but having more room for books is never a bad thing. My dystopian shelf is another one that has been revamped quite a bit since starting my channel. Maybe the most of any of my shelves. These guys used to be on a different shelf. Hunger Games has, off has been stacked in the front before like this but at other times it's been stacked at the back. The Handmaid's Tale and The Testaments are both new. The entire Thousandth Floor series is new. The Grace Year and The Program are new. The Program, I really liked the first one, but then the rest of the series did not like it all. <laughs> and The Grace Year I just read this year and I liked it. And then The Matched series, I think I talked about this in my first CBR tour. I like the first book well enough, but I mostly hang on to it because it is a keepsake from the Apparating Library. The second and the third book I owned in that first CBR tour, but I think I talked about the fact that I really didn't like it very much, and I have since unhauled the second and the third books. And I want to say there was another dystopian series at that time that I also had pretty lukewarm feelings about. It might have been Divergent, which I'm currently rereading the first book. I was planning to reread the whole series, but I'm not even enjoying the first book as much as I thought I would, and I already went into it knowing that I remembered not really enjoying the second and the third as much. So I might DNF this reread after the first book and then just unhaul all three of them, but they're not on the shelves right now because I'm currently reading them. And then this is another shelf that got partially moved onto the new shelf. So just very different looking than when I first started my channel. I've got a kind of weird setup here right now because I don't have enough to dystopian books for two shelves, but I had too much for one. And so like I've got this, I can't fill back here. So I've got this weird space that I just filled in with these guys. Oh my 
God, these are out of order. Good thing I'm doing this TBR tour. Ba -ba -da -ba, filling the hole. Okay, and then the final shelf on my shortest shelves <laughs> is this one down here that you can probably barely see once again. And this one has changed a little bit since then. Stacked in front, I have Princess Academy and Proxy of the Stones. Back in the day, I had Princess Academy and the Goose Girl, but I DNF'd that series and unhauled it. New to this shelf, it's kind of weirdly placed because this is this shelf is mostly like children's fantasy sort of books. And this is not a children's book at all, but it is fantasy and my fantasy shelf way over there is overflowing like many of my shelves. So it hangs out here in the children's section for now. But I really loved this one. This was a five star read for me. And then down here, I also have the entire Inkheart series by Cornelia Funk. And much like Divergent, I'm planning to reread this series somewhat soon. And I do remember not liking the second and the third ones as much as the first one. I'm really hoping that I don't have the same situation as Divergent where I didn't even like the first one as much as I thought I remembered because this is a childhood favorite so I'll be really sad if this first one doesn't hold up but I am kind of planning to maybe unhaul the second and the third because I just remember them kind of being slogs so but I do I do hope that I want to hold on to the first one at least. After that down here we have the entire Land of Elion series by Patrick Carmen. I don't plan to reread these anytime soon, but whenever I do get around to rereading them, there's a pretty good chance I'm gonna get rid of these two. It's originally a trilogy, and then he added on two more at the end, and I didn't really enjoy them, so I don't really need to keep them. But I theoretically plan to keep the first three, although I wouldn't be surprised if I end up only keeping the first one whenever that reread happens. After that we have Oracle of the Horses by Kathleen Miller, which is not one you will have probably heard of because this was self-published by someone in my local area when she was like 13 and I was also like 13. And she managed to get the book put into like the local Barnes and Noble and they even let her do like a little book signing, which was cool. And then finally at the very end here we have two very, very children-y books that I probably don't even need to own anymore, but I do because I liked them back in the day. And they are The Wish by Gail Carson Levine, awesome author, and The Tale of Emily Winsnap by Liz Kessler. Okay, moving on. This is still working out to be a pretty long video, even though I'm trying to go much quicker than I did way back when. And now I have more shelves to do. But at the top here, we have my brand new YA shelf. We've got the two bears up here to fill in this blank space. We've got a nice project for awesome sticker which you can just barely see poking out here. As documented in the video where I put these shelves together, I put the backing in backwards and it's brown back there and it's ugly but I'm gonna cover it in stickers. We're gonna make it be okay. But anyways, moving on to the books on the shelf. This is where I decided to put my two Jennifer Niven books, All the Bright Places and Holding Up the Universe, both of which I really enjoy. And then I also just picked other female author YA books to stick next to them. And for that we've got If I Stay, I'll Give You the Sun, Love Letters to the Dead, The Fashion Committee, The One Memory of Flora Banks, and 13 Reasons Why. I think the only one here that is new is 13 Reasons Why, but moving on, the next shelf was the new dystopian shelf. You can see the stickers here a bit better, they're Mickey and Minnie. I decided to stick my Polaroid here again to fill in some blank space. And for this shelf, I mostly wanted to fit all of my Neil Schusterman books. I only have five, a trilogy and two others, but I wanted them all to be together. The trilogy is of course Scythe, I think probably his most popular books. Then next to that we have Dry, which is less popular, but still at least kind of recent. And this one is a very near future, practically present day dystopia. Next to that we have Downsiders by Neil Schusterman, which is not a dystopia, but again I wanted to put all his books on the same shelf. And even though it's not a dystopia, it is about like a society that's quite different from ours. And it's not a super well-known book by him, I don't think, because it is quite a bit older. It's a childhood favorite for me. Next to that, I feel so bad, is my favorite dystopian of all time. Really, with Harry Potter, my favorite book of all time. So I feel bad that it's not like at the front of a shelf, but 
it's just how the spacing worked out for now. But that is, of course, The Last Book in the Universe by Rodman Philbrick, which I mention all the time. Then next to that we have some classic dystopians, Fahrenheit 451, 1984, The Giver, and then at the very end, more of a children's dystopian, The City of Ember. So quite a few of these are new. I did not have these when I first started my channel. Scythe, Dry, Fahrenheit 451, all new to my shelves in the sense that I did not own them three years ago. But moving on to the bottom shelf of this new little bookcase that I have. This is a little bit of a mishmash. It's mostly nonfiction. On my shelves before, I had a shelf like at the very bottom right corner that was just kind of stuffed with a whole bunch of doesn't belong anywhere else crap. <laughs> so I kind of split it in half, took the half that was things that I liked more to put in this more accessible shelf and then left the rest over in the corner there and made it look a little nicer. My little piggy plushie here. And I've got an outward facing book, which is fun. I've only got three shelves with outward facing books. So before I only had two. My Peter Pan shelf and my fantasy shelf has Aragon facing out. And for this one, I decided to have The Boy, The Mole, The Fox, and The Horse facing out by Charlie Maxey. But yeah, over on the left side here, I have like journals and stuff that I've put myself like on Kindle Vella and like a fill in your own cookbook book. Just kind of random stuff that's more me, I guess. Then next to that we have some nonfiction, not by me. And I'll just kind of go down the line. I'm not gonna bother pulling them all out, but we've got On Writing Well by William Zinsser, which is my favorite nonfiction writing book. Born a Crime by Trevor Noah, which is my favorite memoir that I've read. Yes Please by Amy Poehler. Creativity Inc. by Ed Catmull. Quiet by Suzanne Cain, which I highly recommend for introverts. Bad Feminist by Roxane Gay. Milk and Honey by Ruby Cower, Motherhood by Sheila Hetty. These two little love comic books that are so adorable and relatable. The Legion of Regrettable Supervillains and The League of Regrettable Superheroes, both books about the history of weird comic book characters. Amazing, Fantastic, Incredible by Stan Lee, and Powers of a Girl, which is just like a compendium of female superheroes in Marvel. So yeah, a lot of fun random books. <laughs> okay, and finally, The Tall Shelf. Obviously, Harry Potter shelf still up here has not changed at all. Now, my mystery shelf up here has changed a bit. First of all, I have some fun new decor. This was part of a subscription box gift that I got from a coworker. Christmas present. It was like a set of Marvel superhero Christmas tree ornaments, and he's way too big. <laughs> got this very cute dragon from a Renfest. His name is Charms. The books up here that are the same are The Casual Vacancy by J.K. Rowling, which is not a thriller, but I also have her thriller mystery series up here. At least I have part of it. I don't know if I'm gonna bother finishing. Those books are all so long and I'm really not a mystery person. And then The Green Mile and Mystic River also were up there back in the day. But despite the fact that thriller mystery is not a top genre, I do have a bit of a collection of new books on the shelf that I've gotten in the last three years. The first being The Girl on the Train by Paula Hawkins, which I think I could probably got from a free little library. But I did enjoy it and I did enjoy the movie. Didn't think I would enjoy either of them because they were very much compared to Gone Girl and I did not enjoy that movie at all. I do like thriller mystery movies a lot more than books. The next new one which was a Christmas present from my mother-in-law, was With Malice by Eileen Cook. I had this on my Christmas list because of the author. I saw her at a convention and she was just really funny and really nice and I wanted to get some of her books and I did enjoy this one. I've actually gotten a few other mystery thriller books in this time that I did not end up keeping. One from a subscription box particularly comes to mind that I read around the same time as this and this was way better. <laughs> After that I've got Sadie by Courtney Summers and I enjoyed this one a lot. With the exception of Mystic River and the Green Mile, this might be my favorite mystery book on my mystery thriller shelf. After that I have Good Behavior by Blake Crouch, which I got purely because I love the TV show so much. Did not love the stories as much as the TV show. But since my mystery thriller shelf is not overflowing like so many of my other shelves, I figured I would still hold on to it because I do love this show so much. 
And then finally, a very recent read, My Sister the Serial Killer by Oyun Khan Braithwaite, which this was like just in a monthly wrap up, so I won't talk about it a ton, but there was not as much murder as I thought there would be. But that also didn't bother me since I'm not a huge thriller person. The characters were really interesting. But then the ending was kind of underwhelming. But I still ended up giving it three stars. For most of the book, I was planning to give it four stars. But then yeah, that ending just kind of dragged it down a little bit. And I do realize that a lot of these shelves are not super visible from this angle. So I will give close ups at the end. One new thing that I have since shooting my first bookshelf tour is this fun love uh, balloon that is from my bachelorette party last year and it's still going strong. So cute little decor piece that I like. But anyways, then we have this kind of random shelf. This is kind of a science fiction shelf, but also I have the first two Warriors series on this shelf because they fit there. I don't know how many people know about the Warriors series by Erin Hunter. It comes in like six book arcs and they've done like five of them now. Only the first two are worth reading, but I was obsessed with these at the age of like 13. And yeah, it's just about a house cat that goes and joins some feral cats out in the woods. And they're like divided into essentially Hogwarts houses. Divergent, Harry Potter, Warriors. I was a slut for personality division as a child. <laughs> but yeah, so all of these were here three years ago. All of these were not. I might have had the first one and I might have already read the first one when I first started my channel, but I'm pretty sure I read the second and the third after starting my channel. And like, I'm obsessed with the first one, five stars all the way. The second and the third are also very good, but not as good, more like four stars. Then next to those, I have the entire Lunar Chronicles by Marissa Meyer. Honestly, I could probably unhaul these at some point they were a little hard to get through. They're all quite long. They get longer as they go. It was a bit of a slog. I don't know if I see myself really rereading these. I wanted to love them. They're beautiful. They're fairy tale retellings. But yeah, but I have the space for them still. I don't need to open up this big giant chunk of space. So for now, I plan to hang on to them for the foreseeable future. And then I also have both of the Jurassic Park books, which I owned back in the day, which the first one is fantastic like maybe the most intellectual book I feel like I've ever read and then the second one not so much and it's definitely just a very different vibe than the movies. So moving on down to the bottom shelf here on the left side of the tall shelf. I've still got this giant beanie baby here. I've still got the whole Twilight series which I reread this like a year or two ago and I had the best time. They're trash but I loved it. it they were so fun to reread and that was what I was expecting with the first book in the Divergent series, not the second and the third. I remember those being, the second one being very boring and then the third one being very messy and bad. But the first one I expected to be such a fun time, such a fast read, even more so than Twilight because I'm more into dystopians than paranormal romance. But yeah, Divergent is just being very slow to get through and it's not nearly as fun to reread as Twilight is. And then behind Twilight on this shelf, I have the entire Charlie Bone series, which is a very Harry Potter-esque series from my childhood. It's definitely not as good as Harry Potter. There are eight books in the series. They're all about 300-ish pages, maybe more like 400. I really enjoyed these as a kid. I have not reread them in years. I do remember them dropping off quite a bit after about the third book. So honestly, I don't, again, this is a case where I don't know if I see myself ever rereading it. Maybe someday and you know, maybe I'll get through like the first three or so and then I expect that I'll be like, okay, it's time to be done with this and I'll probably unhaul most if not all of them. <laughs> For right now, they do take up almost the entire back section of a shelf all by themselves. So that's another reason I probably could see myself unhauling them someday. And this bottom shelf, which again is just kind of a random collection of books could maybe become a little bit more fantasy focused because my fantasy fantasy shelf once again is very full. Ah. And then next to the Charlie Bone series here I have holes. This shelf actually has space for a couple of more books but yeah there's just no books to put there. But again yeah a kind of random collection shelf. I've got my <laughs> 
paranormal romance, which I have no other paranormal romance books at all. I've got my children's fantasy series and I've got this real world YA book. Not even YA, children's. But I love Holes. Holes is one of my favorite books from childhood. Okay, I just realized I've been skipping around these shelves very randomly. <laughs> I did the, the top on the right. No, I did, I, I mentioned Harry Potter, then I did the top on the right, then I did this one, then I did this one, and I skipped this whole section. I don't know what I'm doing. Anyways, going back to the Peter Pan shelf, maybe in my mind I was like, this shelf has not changed at all, because it has not changed at all. Much like the Harry Potter shelf, it looks the exact same as it used to. But I'll go ahead and name off what's on there really quick, because it's not just one series. I've got Peter Pan, of course. Tiger Lily, which is my favorite Peter Pan retelling. I need to stop knocking things off the shelf. Uh, the whole Fairy Dust and the Quest for the Egg series by Gil Carson Levine, and the whole Peter and the Starcatchers series by Dave Barry and Ridley Pearson. So yeah, that's the that's the Peter Pan shelf that I skipped. And then over here is the fantasy shelf that I've mentioned a couple times that is quite full. And this one has changed a bit back in the day when I did my first bookshelf tour. I think I just had The Inheritance Cycle by Christopher Paolini and the Game of Thrones series by the man who will not finish the series, <laughs> George R.R. R. Martin. Christopher Paolini has since written a new like set of three short stories that tie into the Inheritance Cycle and they're back there sitting on top of the Inheritance Cycle books. And then the main thing that I've added since then is the Three Dark Crowns series by Kendark Blake, which was a really up and down series. First book, five stars. Then I really didn't like the second book. It was like my least favorite in the series. And then I liked the third one quite a bit, but still not as much as the first. And then the fourth one was kind of meh. After that, we have kind of a historical fiction shelf, mostly. More Beanie Babies. So in the front here, I have a stack of kind of two favorite historical fiction authors, except that one is not historical fiction at all, it's just literary fiction. But anyways, the first one of those two is Marcus Zusak. I have The Book Thief and I Am The Messenger. I did finally get rid of Bridge of Clay. That book is so long and I just don't I don't understand what it's about. <laughs> the Book Thief is one of my favorite books of all time. This one's just okay. And then an author that I'm slowly working my way through all of his books, Frederick Bachman. I owned this one at the time when I shot my first tour back in the day and I loved it and I've started working on his other books since then. So I have My Grandmother Asked Me to Tell You She's Sorry and Beartown, which is a trilogy and I don't know if I'm ever gonna finish the trilogy, but I still count that at least I read the first one, at least I gave it a chance. Most of his books are standalones, and this year I'm planning to read Brit Marie Was Here, so that'll be most likely added to the shelf this year. I'm assuming I'm gonna love it. And then at the back of this shelf, we have The House in the Cerulean Sea, which I just read in January and I very much enjoyed. Two books that were already on here were The Help and The Boy in the Striped Pajamas, but I just read brand new a month ago, I think, The Invention of Wings by Sue Monk Kidd. I've got The Last Letter from Your Lover by Jojo Moyes, which I think was on there back in the day. The Memory Keeper's Daughter, which I read maybe a year or two ago. Fireproof Home for the Bride, which I think was already on there. And Their Eyes Were Watching God, which I think I read, again, like a year or two ago. And then also Orphan Train, which was already on there. The Bone Setter's Daughter, again, I read about a year or two ago. And The Librarian of Auschwitz, which I think I read after starting my channel, but if so, it wasn't very long after. And then moving on, the very final shelf, which I kind of mentioned when I was talking about this shelf over here that was just a hodgepodge. Again, on the left side is kind of more me stuff, like notebooks and stuff. But then we've got Marley and Me, some like work books, my old English-Spanish dictionary that was in the first tour because I took Spanish in college. Even more like miscellaneous than these and I just don't really care about those books very much. Maybe you should get rid of some of them, who knows. But anyways, as promised, I will now do kind of a close-up of all of the shelves. But I'm also gonna go ahead and just say my little outro while I'm sitting here so that I don't have to bother with changing camera angles and stuff. So we're gonna come back to this angle after you see the little close-ups. 
and I'm gonna be saying goodbye to you. <laughs>